I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hi, this is Matt once again. This is one of the reviews for Brock, who wanted my thoughts on some films. Thanks to his donation to PayPal. Thank you so much for that. If anyone's ever interested in requesting pretty much any type of video, you just send it directly to my PayPal or join me on my Patreon. Both of those links are down in the info box. But he wanted me to talk about the original Hairspray from 1988, which I had heard about, I had not seen. It's a John Waters film. And like I said in my review of Cry Baby, I do think John Waters and me, in my opinion, if I learn how to talk, works better in this field. More clean cut, but still has that zany, weird exuberance of camp, campy fun without stuff like divine eating shit. <laughs> like pink flamingos. And divine is in this. I believe it's the last film she, I mean it's a he, but portrays as she does divine plays the lead character's mother as well as another character and the plot of the film is ricky lake people might not even know who the hell ricky lake is but she would years later lose a lot of weight have her own talk show for quite a few years but here she stars as as she calls it a plumpy individual her mother is played by Divine, and her dad is played by, was it Jerry Stiller? Damn it, I forgot who the hell played her, her dad. But she wants to get on this dance show called the Corny Collins Dance Show. And again, it has that energetic, campy, fun vibe to it of the time. Where people doing dances like the mashed potatoes. Like, Give me gravy on my mashed potatoes. And you have the privileged daughter with her racist bossy parents. The father actually played by Sonny Bono. Which people might not even know who the hell that is. He used to be with Cher and they did a variety show. And then they broke up. And then he was in films like the first Troll movie. and. So, you know, she's, uh, the daughter's a bitchy lady. Ricky Lake, her character, she thinks she can do well in the show, and she does. And then her stardom starts to rise. Where the bitchy girl's boyfriend starts liking her now. It was nice to see you have a person who is plump and big, but they don't do the obvious fat jokes where she's always eating. They don't have her trip and fall because she's fat, right? They handle it, I thought, respectfully. They handle it well. The PC way. Like, they handle it fairly well. A hey, Ricky Lake, I thought she did a good job. She was a likable character. And I did not realize this touched on a serious subject, too, which is segregation. How there are people who could not get into this show unless one day of the month. Other than that, 
a black person cannot be a part of this. And of course, Ricky Wait, Wait, Ricky Late doesn't like that. And then some of the films she wants to. Then the movie deals with segregation. It does that, but it doesn't lose its tone. It's still a fun, zippy vibe to it, and as well as merging this seriousness to segregation. I thought that was well done on John Waters' part. And the, her rise, she gets a dig as this plus size store model with these clothes. Her and her buddy get detention. Like she gets detention for her hairdo, and then they meet these other people who happen to be black, and they did show her some moves. They bring into shops and show her some moves. And yeah, it's dealing with the themes of segregation, which thankfully is not as well. That segregated part is not as bad as it is back then. But as we all know, there's still issues of racism, and that flat out fucking sucks. It's not as bad as it used to, in my opinion, but still, the fact is still a point is annoying as fuck. Sally, that's the human race, and sadly, I don't think we'll ever remedy that. I really don't. It's never going to be the Star Trek. Well, now it's not even that with Star Trek, if you watch something like Picard, but where Star Trek was, was that Oh, we've gotten over racism and money. Not anymore. At least that was handled well in, say, Star Trek VI. But all the shit I heard about Picard... Well, anyway, that's another tangent. Everything I heard about that show sounds like fucking dog shit. Just wa ask my friend Michael Keane, the choice voice, about how shitty that show is. I believe him. 110%. But getting back to this... You know, the characters are saying lies that our souls are black, even though our skins are white. And it deals with police brutality. Weird. Concern. That's an issue of today. Her friend runs away with a black guy because the parents are so pissed off about it. She gets arrested for a bullshit charge and people, including the parents, are like, release her, release her. Things work out. What the movie did well, it had catchy music, perky performances, a nice message to it, and some good dancing. You know, old school dancing, but energetic. Movie kept at a nice pace to it. And I've never seen the remake. Now I understand why John DeVolta is in drag. It's like, what the fuck? Because Divine played the mom in this and that was a man dressed up as a woman so they wanted to redo that for 2007 Hairspray which I don't care to see that honestly it looked like shit this one looked like it had that for understanding that's more of a musical this is a movie that just happens to have music in it I prefer this you haven't seen that I don't care the actors did their jobs well. Ricky Lake was likable. Again, it had a nice message to it, but it didn't deviate too much, so it became a straight-out drama. I said, what the fuck movie I'm in now? It didn't do that. I thought it, it did a decent job blending the two in there. And it, it still had that silly, fun, campy vibe, which John Waters is a big fan of camp. I, I, there was even a Simpsons episode that dealt with that about his love for camp. I don't know if he played himself, but John Waters was in a Simpsons episode. I think it was the episode where Homer thinks Bart is gay. I believe it was that episode. I believe so, because I had the Simpsons DVDs and John Waters on the commentary. Yeah, so it was that. I didn't even think I did I did if I stop stuttering. I did I did I did I did not even remember that until now that that episode existed. That's right. It's been a while since I've seen those. But yeah, John Waters, you he's in here for a little bit as a guy who the parents hire to try to force this woman, you only like white boyfriends. 
You do not want your black boyfriend. Which is trying to do a very over the top silly way of a real problem. How do you... P Sally, this is something that would happen back in the day. Make that a real theme, but also do it to a ridiculous point. So you still keep your meme, but you still keep the... The tone... Not off kilter. So I think... Hairspray, you know, did that fairly well. And I liked it. I liked the film. I was a bit surprised. Like, this and Crybaby were... I wasn't really big in John Waters because I had only seen stuff like Pink Flamingos, which I did not like at all. But this... I liked... Maybe I liked this a little bit more than Crybaby, but I liked both of these. They were pretty decent. It was a good... One two punch. Because Hairspray was 1988, it was popular. And because the film made so much money, is how John Waters got Crybaby. And this was like $2 million budget. And again, because it's made so much money, then in 1990, he got like a $12 million budget to do Crybaby, but then that didn't do well. I think he did a film Serial Mom. I, I haven't seen that. I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. But uh, I've seen bits and pieces of it. But yeah, I look forward to other John Waters films. Giving them a look, as long as they're when he tries to do the more over the top disgusting stuff, like Divine Eating Shit and Pink Flamingos, whatever the fuck. Just wasn't for me. This. I, I do deal with this John Waters. With that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.